In this video, we're gonna cover why your drone has flown away and what you can do about it. There are some very important tips in here. This video is based on an article on droneflyingpro.com. Go check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. But in that article, I have a whole bunch of information, scientific studies and more that you can learn from and make sure that flyaways, arguably the most dangerous and annoying aspect of flying a drone, don't happen to you. So drone flyaways are essentially when your drone just disappears into the distance. And that is really, really annoying. Um, there are sort of like five or six reasons for it, but there are two studies that I wanna highlight first. The first one was in 2016, where they found that um, essentially pilot error causes a load of issues. And that pilot error comes from the kind of, uh, the fact that you are removed from this drone that is flying out in the air. You know, first person view on these drones, this is the Mavic Air, which is a fantastic drone. Um, you know, it does allow you to see where the drone is and what it can see, but there is still a disconnect between what you're doing and what the drone is doing. And that is a fundamental issue of drone incidents. And then there was another study in 2004 that found that 32% of all incidences were due to pilot error. So what this tells me is that really flyaways are really, really sort of damaging to your drone. They're really frustrating, but you can prepare for them and it is your skill level which essentially dictates whether or not you will be able to survive this flyaway. So I'll be covering all of that in this video. So let's get over to the first one. Uh, why does your drone fly away? Well, because of these reasons. I love the Mavic DJI drone and I love all of its predecessors and the new ones. This is just a perfect drone for me at the moment good-ish video quality, but packs down to almost nothing. It's incredible. Um, but I love this drone because it's got a return to home feature. So as soon as it takes off, it um, records its GPS location. And you can also choose to have like a precision landing thing where it takes off. And uh, while it's taking off, it takes photos underneath just using uh, these cameras here. I think that's it. Yep. Those, cam those two cameras just here. Um, and what it does is look for, first of all, its GPS location, but also looks at the actual takeoff spot and looks for features in there that it can say, okay, I'm gonna land right here. Now, when you first take off, it does record your GPS location. Not all drones do it all the time. There's settings that you can turn off. You can accidentally say, no, don't take off and record the GPS location. You can reset the GPS location as you're flying as well. And you can have the GPS location come back or the home location come back to where the controller is. All of these things means that if you hit that return to home button, your drone may just disappear in another direction without you realizing it. Um, so making sure that you do have return to home set, that it records when you first take off and that you don't change it during the flight is so important. So there we are. You know, all of these different um, advanced software features that we come to know and love in our drones, they actually can be a bit of a hindrance when we just don't use them properly. You know, it comes down to being familiar with your drone and making sure that you are 100% aware of what your drone is going to do with the advanced features that you've got. Uh, it can be a little bit of a nightmare. The second reason is your drone may fly away because the return to home altitude is set too low. Now, these drones, if you put, uh, you know, return to home, if you push the button, they will go up or descend to the return to home altitude, which you set in the, in the app. Now, mine set is 60 meters, and that's big enough to clear any uh, big trees in Australia where I am any uh, like stoby poles or uh, telegraph poles, I think they're called in other parts of the world. So all of those things are much lower than 60 meters. So my drone will ascend or descend and then go back to home in a straight line at that height. Now, if you've got a fancy drone, your return to home altitude, if it comes across a, a problem or a obstacle, it will have obstacle avoidance and it will try to go around 
the obstacle. Now the issue is, is that it's only so clever, which means that if your drone is traveling and it comes across something that it can't quite get around, it doesn't know whether to go this way, this way, up or down, it will just stop. And in the worst case scenario, it may just head off in a completely different direction. Um, that's pretty unlikely. It's more likely just to stop and not know what it's doing. And it's up to you as a pilot to bring it home. Um, yes. So make sure that not only your return to home place is set, but the return to home altitude is set at a uh, height that is appropriate for your local environment. Number three is compass interference. Now, quite often with this drone, I have to recalibrate the compass. And that's because there is a load of interference in my surroundings. Interference comes from, for a compass, large metallic objects or large magnetic objects. And so I've often tried to take off on some reinforced concrete blocks because they're nice, big and flat, put the drone on top and then it says calibrate your, your compass. And that's because the iron in the uh, metal reinforcement in the concrete just causes this compass, this small electronic compass, to really struggle to work out where it is and which way it's pointing. Other interference can come from cars, can come from big sheds, can come from uh, wires, can come from other buildings, um, large magnetic objects as well. So it's strange, but the largest magnetic object that I've flown near is probably like a speaker. Um, and there's not much you can do other than just avoid these things. So uh, yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating, but staying away from things that can cause significant magnetic interference, and that includes some naturally occurring rocks as well. Um, that just means that you will be assured that when your drone decides it's gonna return to home, the compass knows which way it's pointing, and it's not gonna just fly away in a weird ass direction. <laughs> The fourth thing is flying out of line of sight. Now, do you remember that study I mentioned in the beginning? In 2016, they found that there was a disconnect between the pilot and where the drone was, and that meant that the that was a fundamental issue in uh, drone incidents and accidents. And so what I recommend is you take your drone and you never ever fly out of line of sight. In Australia, it's a legal requirement that if you're flying your drone, it needs to be within a certain distance of you, and also you need to be able to see it at all times. Uh, and look, it can be a little bit confusing. So the first person view of your camera, the, the one you get on your screen when, you, when you've uh, got your remote control, is so awesome and fundamental in deciding where your drone is orientated, where it's at, and essentially all I do every time is I find myself and I just fly towards myself. Um, but if you're out of line of sight, you can't do that. And so it's very easy to mistake one tree for another or to uh, forget uh, where a building is or a major landmark or, you know, all of these things. And then combine that with like a compass error or a GPS error or something like that. And you've got a recipe for the perfect annoying flyaway. And the fifth and final reason you may have a flyaway is because your GPS signal is lost. The GPS on these drones is used for a load of reasons. The first one is stability, knowing where it is, flying to waypoints, all of those things rely on GPS signal. Now I've got another article on Drone Flying Pro that talks about what happens if you lose GPS signal and uh, it can be pretty disastrous. So essentially, if you can see the sky, you have got GPS signal. So flying indoors, into caves, under bridges, like all of those things could actually cause you to lose GPS location for a moment. And the drone is only so smart. We can't rely on it to kind of always know where it's at. I know these DJI drones also have kind of a visual positioning system, but that only works if they can see something that they can sort of relate to and kind of calculate a distance or direction from. It's not very good, to be honest. It doesn't hold its altitude or location very well just based on the visual positioning systems. And so if you lose GPS, that is the perfect combination for panic and also uh, your drone and entering this ATI mode where it uh, can be moved by winds and it uh, can be sort of 
adjusted due to the environmental conditions without your knowledge and then it's really down to your manual flying power and how good you are to get that drone back so a bit scary but definitely something that can cause a fly away so there we have it there are all the reasons why your drone may fly away go check out the article on drone flying pro and let me know in the comments what you would add to that list if this video was great for you please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification i'm going to be reviewing drones giving you drone advice tips and everything else to help you and your drone flying journey i hope you have a fantastic day week month whatever it is and i shall see you in the next video